Good morning and welcome to worship on this first Sunday after the miracle of Christmas. Let us center our hearts and minds as we meditate on these words together from Isaiah 6. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, as a gardener causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord and our promise as we go into our new year together. Thanks be to God. Let us now come together in our call to worship. Embrace the child and bless your God, for the works of God's hands are faithful and just. They have set a star to hang in the sky. With a blazing torch, our God shall lead us. They have sewn the world a garment of light. With swaddling love, our God shall clothe us. For the child's sake, let us not keep silent. For the child's sake, let us not find rest until all God's earth is robed in brightness, until all God's earth shall burn with life. Let us now join together in our invocation. O comforter of the world's peoples, we tarry in your temple awaiting a sign. You have long promised that those who hunger for righteousness shall not taste death before their deliverance. But death swaggers now outside our door, taunting us with each strike of the dock. Redeem us, O God. Send your life into our midst. Deliver your spirit into our hearts. Then we, once feeble, shall cry, God, my Father. We, once feeble, will become your children. We, once feeble, will take your name. Amen. more before the Lord in prayer. O oh, this very hour we give thanks to you, O oh God, for on this day we who have seen much with our eyes have seen all with our hearts. We who have seen the dusk of so many old days have seen the dawn of a new day. We, O oh God, have seen our salvation. We easily could have not seen, not because of tired eyes, but because of weary spirits. Time violates the heart. The advance of years breeds the anxiety of age. Oh, to be children again, to be cradled in the arms of our fathers, to be lifted in the arms of our mothers, to be strangers once again to our parents' world. 
but our childhood has vanished. We have grown. We have become strangers to one another and to ourselves. We have grown, becoming wise in the ways of our parents' world and feigning ignorance of the ways of our your world. We were groping for your new world, O oh God, in some remote corner of our foolish hearts. We were hoping for your salvation, but this is not what we expected. You sent no armies of angels to fight our fights, no yellow brick roads to show us the way, no earthquakes to topple our great walls of fear. No, to save us, you sent what we had lost. You sent the child into our hearts, and we lifted the child into our arms and blessed your name. This child is only one of the many born among us. Only one of many you have called holy, only one of many we have seen. Yet this child, whom we have seen with our hearts, has brought joy to all the world. Still our joy is pierced with great sorrow, for this child shall not remain a child. Surely he will grow and become strong. He shall be filled with the wisdom of the new world. But when the child enters our world, Savior, we shudder to know that we shall rob him of his youth, that we shall sacrifice him upon ungodly altars. Unto us a child is born? Yes. But unto whom is this child given? Into whose hands, O Lord, have you commanded his spirit? Into whose hands, O God? Are they ours, Lord? Is it we who have received him only to give him up for thirty pieces of silver? O God, return Mary and Joseph and Jesus safely to their own city. Be with them. Watch over the child as the days pass, but slow time's course. Help us to prepare for him, to make straight our ways. Help him before the hour is late to bless, not curse, to declare, not deny, to trust, not to betray, to be reborn, not die. Help us, O oh Lord, to keep the child within us safe, lest we destroy the child you sent to save us. Amen. This morning, we are pleased to welcome into our worship the Reverend Dawn Taylor Storm, the former district superintendent of our South District and currently the director of Connectional Ministries for the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference. She will be bringing us a message from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Hear now the words of that gospel. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him, the baby Jesus, up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took the baby in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. 
There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phineol, the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the favor of God who was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My husband, Dan, loves the movies. I'm actually filming from his man cave in the basement. I try to never come down here. But when we were dating, Dan did the strangest thing when we would go to the movie theater. The movie would be over and I would get up to go home and Dan would just remain sitting there to watch the credits. He watched every name as it scrolled across that screen. And I even remember the people were coming in to clean up the popcorn on the floor and we were the only people sitting there in the movies. I think I felt for Dan that day as I saw his expression of gratitude. But one day there we were in the theater watching the post credits. Everybody else had left, gone home a few minutes earlier. And suddenly there was a scene. There was um, this little vignette that came on. It was a foreshadowing for the next movie in the series. And we were so excited that we had stayed and we had this experience. Now you see these quite a bit. They're called stingers and comic book movies put them in. So if you're in a Marvel movie, uh, definitely stay for the credits. DC has some catching up to do. But there are these scenes in the credits that uh, folks will stay and enjoy. And um, if you go home, you'll miss it. This Sunday, the Gospel of Luke has a scene that we don't want to miss, a stinger that's worth staying for. Now, most folks have gone home. The Christmas trees are out by the roadside. Even virtual attendance has less traction this week. People are done with Christmas. Some people wonder if there was even a Christmas at all this year. But for those of us who have remained, Luke has a story for us, a part of the birth story that we don't want to miss. And this morning, I want to zoom in with you as we see that moment. You see, Simeon, that older man, has been going to the temple day after day. I wonder, as Simeon went to the temple, if people mocked him. I wonder if people said, Simeon, just go home already. It's been 600 years. Give up. The Messiah is not coming. But Simeon would not give up on God. Every day he makes his way to the temple. Every day he shows up. Simeon is one who shows up. I hope in your life you have someone like that. I think those of you who are engaging worship on this Sunday after Christmas, you're the folks who stay, who show up. People who show up are the ones who are delivering groceries right now to their neighbors who are in quarantine. People who show up are the ones that you know you can call up on the phone and they'll listen without judgment. They'll meet you where you are. People who show up know what it is to follow Jesus, the one who shows up for us. And so Simeon showed up at that temple day after day. Simeon refused to give up on God. And here's the thing. God refused to give up on Simeon. Sometimes people feel like they're no longer, that God no longer remembers them. In our society today, ageism is real, and particularly folks who are older feel like the church even has forgotten about them. This past week, I was Zooming with our retired clergy, and I had tears in my eyes as they all gathered together on that screen from all over the United States. Many of them had not seen each other in years, 
and we gave thanks for ministry that continues every day that we have breath. You see, God does not give up on us, and God often uses people that the world has forgotten to show God's salvation. And so this morning, it is Simeon to whom God reveals God's very self. Every day, he goes to that temple. And then one day, friends, one day they come. Can you picture them? Can you really picture them? They were tired. They were worn out. They were young. Oh, so young. We forget just teenagers as they made their way that day to the temple for the presentation and the purification. They come. I picture the determination on Mary and Joseph's face that indeed, no matter how weary they are, they will claim their child as God's beloved son. So they make their way there. We not only forget how young they were, but we often forget how poor they were. They bring just that day the birds as an offering. You see, Jesus preached about the injustice of poverty, but he also knew it intimately. Jesus knew what it is to be impoverished. He knew what it is to be immigrant. He knew what it is to be outcast. And Jesus speaks from his experience as he calls us in this world to see those that others do not see. And so they come that day, the Holy Family, and there's a miracle in Simeon's waiting. But friends, there's also a miracle in Simeon's watching. For who would have expected the Messiah to show up that day in the vulnerability of a baby? Who would have expected God to come in this world in one that was powerless? But Simeon sees. Simeon sees God in the unexpected. I pray you and I might have eyes to see. If you want to find Jesus this morning, if you want to find Christmas this morning, go to the margins. Go and find the people that the world has forgotten. That day, Simeon saw the salvation of God in a baby. And he takes that baby in his arms and he lifts that baby to God and says, Now, Master, thy servant may be dismissed and depart in peace. Many folks have taken this first Christmas song and they've trivialized it saying, Oh, Simeon can now just die in peace. The old man can die. That's not what Simeon is saying. When he says that he can now be dismissed in peace, that word in Greek is like a sentry sitting watch every day, waiting and watching. And finally, finally peace has come, not just for Simeon, but the salvation of the world has come. Simeon knows that in this child, the world is now turned upside down. Simeon knows that in this child, now there is peace. What about you? And what about me this Christmas? Can we depart in peace? The pandemic continues to ravage our communities. Racial inequity continues to be a reality, not only in our communities, but in our churches. Polarization, sometimes in our very families, is real. How, in the midst of all of this, can we depart in peace? I want you to remember again the community to whom Luke is writing. You see, that community was a community that knew oppression intimately. Just Google for a minute Emperor Caligula and you will see what it was to live under the tyranny of the most unjust ruler possible. Remember what it was as even factions began to war with one another, the zealots and the Romans plotting. Remember what it is to live in a place where you don't know if you'll be able to find any peace in the streets because there is no peace. You see, the world to which Jesus came, the world to which Jesus born was a world filled with suffering and injustice. 
people were afraid. Economic ruin was real for these people who lived under an oppressive regime. To this world, Jesus comes. This Christmas has been unlike any you or I have experienced before. Many of us did not gather with our loved ones. For some of us, we are quarantined ourselves. For others, we have family members for whom we are praying vigilantly day and night. How has Christmas come? But friends, in some ways, this Christmas is the most real of all. In some ways, perhaps, We've experienced Christmas for the first time. Christmas isn't about all of the trimmings. Christmas is about God breaking into our mess. Not of us going to God, but of God literally coming to us, moving into our neighborhoods, moving into the pain, moving into the injustice, God showing up. That's what Emmanuel means. And so, like Simeon, we are able to depart in peace. From Simeon, I learn what it means to wait, to trust that God's word is real and that God will show up. Simeon waited day after day. From Simeon, I learned what it means to watch. Simeon watched for God in the unexpected ways. Simeon saw God in the most unlikely of persons, the Messiah coming in the vulnerability of a baby. And from Simeon, I learn wonder. As Simeon lifts that child before God and rejoices that indeed God's joy and wonder have come. That's why this weary world rejoices. That's why rejoicing is possible even in our weariness, for friends. That's why Christmas has come. I still remember sitting in that theater Obviously, as you can see from behind me, my husband's love of movies continues. Pray for me, friends. But I still remember that moment as everybody else had gone and people were cleaning up the popcorn and there was this unexpected scene, this stinger that came on this morning. For those of you who have remained, for those of you who have not given up on God, for those of you who are willing to wait and watch, the wonder comes. And that wonder is one that is meant to be shared with the world. Even those who have gone, for them the wonder has come as well. God has come to us. And like Simeon, because of God's coming, we are able this day to depart in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hey, what are you doing down here? Oh, nothing, nothing. Did I, you touch anything? I didn't touch anything.
And now may the peace of God, the peace not as the world gives, but the peace that the Christ child came into the world to show us. May that eternal peace rest with you. And may you walk with your Savior in newness of life from this day forward. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.